pretty sure I got my rings sorted out here. Dome rings. Um, at least sorted out in the order they go in. Um, I've also got my Lazy Susan out here. I've got the dome gear. And underneath the top ring of the body. Uh, the Mark III body. It's different than the version 2 body. However, the dome is the version 2 dome. Uh, this is a page from Michael Badley's instructions where he talks about the rings. It's a little bit confusing. There's seven parts each that need to be glued together. And uh, upper ring is glued clockwise 1 through 7 and the lower ring counterclockwise 7 to 1. So um, this is the lower ring because when the dome is right side up it's the lower ring and this is the upper ring. Um, I've got bolts running through most of the holes to secure it to the dome but I don't have any nuts holding them on it was just to see if it would fit I've also got a couple glue joints to do to finish off this lower ring um, for whatever reason my lower ring, I can feel with my fingers, sticks further out than my upper ring. I don't know if it's supposed to do that. Um, it feels like it's all the way around too, so it's not just that it's uneven, which I'm sure it is partially uneven, but it does seem to stick further out than the lower ring, and the lower ring is supposed to be flush with the bottom of the dome, my dome, printed in 2017 that I'm thinking of redoing because I'm having issues getting it to a state that I'm happy with. Um, lower ring right here I can feel is inset a bit from the dome. Go over here and it's nice and flush fairly flush and then it goes insert you can kind of see the white that doesn't have any primer from the bottom of my dome there then it sticks out just a tad now it's in a bit I mean it's not it's not terrible it's not huge amounts out you can see the white there between the orange PLA and the dome. That's about all it is sticking out. I mean, that looks less than a millimeter to me, so I guess I should consider that all right. But just feeling with my thumb, it feels like this lower ring sticks out about a millimeter from the upper ring, and I don't know if that's supposed to be that way or not. And I honestly can't remember what printer I printed each of the rings on. <laughs> They're seven pieces each. So my Prusa or my TiVo Tornado both would have been capable of printing them. Um, yeah, not sure about that. There is a gap. Each of the rings has an indent. Um, it prints on the bed with, this one prints with this side facing down on the bed, this one prints with this side facing down on the bed, and there's an inset channel there that's supposed to be there, and it looks fine on the orange PLA, but and it probably won't show here, the white PLA might be PLA plus again I'm not sure what printer I printed this on I probably should have written that stuff down um, it didn't do this overhang very well 
So there's some slop in the middle that I imagine is going to be a pain in the neck to clean up. Um, so I don't know if I should try reprinting one of these rings and see if I can get that overhang to print a little bit cleaner or not. Um, again, might be reprinting the dome too. These are M4 bolts. Um, I only had a few on hand that actually fit. Uh, let's see, some are 30 mil tall and some are 35. 30 mil. I've got my finger on it right now. It's long enough to get a bolt on there. 35 is definitely long long enough um, so these holes with the recesses that's for the bolts that hold this ring goes through this ring and through the holes in the dome these smaller holes are what holds your lazy Susan onto here. Um, if we look at the Lazy Susan dome ring, gear ring, there's a motor with a gear underneath that spins and that's what rotates the inner part of the Lazy Susan. Remember the Lazy Susan has an outer and an inner part with ball bearings in between. And you can see that hole lines up with the gear ring. There are six of them all the way around. And if you look at these, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then back to where you started. So the underside of the Lazy Susan inner ring is countersunk for a countersunk bolt that goes up through the inner ring of the Lazy Susan through the gear motor and then the dome sits on top of those bolts those are supposed to be really long bolts also partially to help you um, put the dome on. The outer ring, these are countersunk four bolts that go this way and secure it to the body top ring. Again, I'm printing the Mark III body. This is the top ring of the body, a ring that's, that bolts to the body itself. So it's not part of the dome rings, it's the top body ring. It sits on the top of the body. And it has these recess bolts that line up with slots on this top ring. And there's a hole underneath here where you can put a square nut and it's got a slot for different Lazy Susans of different thicknesses that hopefully yours will fit when you drill the holes or get it pre-drilled. This is the granite earth dome which all these holes were pre-drilled. It costs more than the other domes out there and that's why. Um, you're basically paying for the convenience of having holes drilled. Is it worth it? Mm, I don't really know. That's 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 up to you. I decided to get to go that route to save some hole drilling, but you still might need to modify things. And what I'm going to need to modify looks like the same thing that uh, another builder whose um, pictures have helped me, and he's also got uh, YouTube. He's making videos now, Jason Charlton. And he just took this 
which is supposed to line up with these, but it's a bit too far inward. So he just cut slit uh, one there and one there. So basically this becomes a slot, an open slot instead of just a round hole. Rather than try and drill the whole oblong, he just cut that in there. And the way the dome fits on with multiples of these, it keeps it in place. So it looks like I'll have to do that too because these are these are too far inbound. In fact, if you can see, I don't know that I can get an M4 nut or uh, yeah M4 nut down in there because it looks like it's going to hit the orange of the other ring is is partially blocking that hole. So hopefully that's all I have to do is just cut a couple slots on all of those all the way around this ring and they'll line up with this. Um, don't know that I'm going to be able to take this ring off with all these bolts by hand. I might pause and then come back to it. In fact, I think I will rather than making a huge mess to show you what order to glue these rings together in. Since the instructions do say that one is clockwise and one is counterclockwise, I'll show you a, a thing that you should do when you print these or after you get them printed that might help. I glued my rings together wrong. It's very embarrassing, but I only just found that out now. <laughs> this is take two of this video, because take one, I was writing the numbers on my parts, and noticed that I had glued these together wrong. They still line up, though. They still work. I got lucky on that. Um, <laughs> don't make the same mistake I did. Okay, here's what I'm telling you. All right, here is the Michael Badley instruction page. And it tells you that the rings are glued parts one through seven or seven through one. One goes clockwise, one's glued counterclockwise. The upper ring is clockwise and the lower ring is counterclockwise. Here's the upper ring. Luckily, the upper ring, all the pieces appear to be the same. Um, equidistant spaced cuts, equidistant spaced holes of these orange raised cylinders are holes. Okay, if you can see right there, there's a number seven. And there's a number four. Uh, yeah, how does that work? Seven and four. That's that's not counterclockwise or clockwise. It's just wrong. <laughs> um, all I can say is it was late at night. Uh, all right. So what I recommend you do, what I did not do and should have done, write the numbers on top of the parts. Okay. Both of these rings, upper ring, lower ring, here's one, there's two, they're numbered on the part that sits on the print bit, the flat bit. Okay. The instructions um, show the flat bit facing up. Okay, so this one with the numbers facing towards you, this is the lower ring, is counterclockwise. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the upper ring, my orange ring. This one with the parts facing towards you, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, goes clockwise. Clockwise, counterclockwise. I messed this one up. 
like I said, I just found that out and I got lucky because the way that Michael cut this file, he cut them so that the pieces appear to all be equidistant cuts with equidistant spacing because these bolt holes line up perfectly. So I got lucky. So what I have labeled inside here is completely wrong. <laughs> what I've got on this side is completely wrong. That's why you should look at this instruction page and you should write those numbers on the side of the part that they're not on. Especially if you're gluing them like I did with the flat side down. I have a nice board that I know is flat and I glued them flat side down so I knew that it was as close as I'm going to get to keeping the two pieces flat by having them down on a flat board. Which means I'm looking at the numbers here and then I'm flipping them upside down so instead of one on the left, two on the right, if you flip it the other way around, now two is on the left, one is on the right, and evidently that was too much for my little brain and I got confused. The final way they sit is like this, with bottom to bottom. So they each have that indentation in it. And those should those should line up. So don't pay attention to the numbers on mine because I have them wrong. If your upper ring right there goes clockwise, one through seven, in this direction, it means if you're putting it down on a board and gluing it this way, it should go seven to one. It should go one through seven counterclockwise when it's upside down from where the numbers are printed on the piece. But again, I got lucky and it st still worked out for me the way I glued it. So here I thought I was going to be helping by showing here's how you do it properly and I've actually got it wrong. But it doesn't seem to matter. So mine is wrong because you see where I wrote one, two, three. And if you look at this picture, it shows one, two, three. Okay. But that's this direction. One, two, three. Which when you flip it over, it would be three, two, one. So do yourself a favor, label the parts. Look at the instructions and realize that they're talking about when the piece has the flat side with the numbers embossed on the SDL file facing up. That's the orientation they're talking about. Now this is the lower ring. This one goes counterclockwise. I got that one right. Thank goodness. Because, okay, again, there's the number seven. And there's six, five, four, three, two, one, counterclockwise. Because this one is not the same as the upper ring. The lower ring, if you look at these holes, this one's got three holes. Three holes. They all have different hole positions. This one's really obvious. There's a hole here, here, and here. Whereas this piece has two almost next to each other and one way over here. And here again they're spaced out. They're spaced out. These two are really close together. So if you get this one wrong you're gonna have to try and snap it apart and glue it the right way or just reprint it and glue it the right way. So don't be dumb like me. <laughs> Learn from my mistake and and get it right the first time. Now my lower ring isn't completely glued. I've got a couple glued joints. But what I wrote on there with 
mechanical pencil that comes off when you're handling it. So when I was doing sanding of the outside room to make it smoother, I kind of smeared some of it. But I wrote CCW for counterclockwise 7 to 1 numbers visible to tell me that when the numbers are visible, it needs to be 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So of course, that means that when it's flipped this direction, it's going to be the opposite. So this is piece number one. This is two. This is three. So I've written CCW on all the pieces and then a number, five, six, seven. So this one, if you print it, if you glue it upside down, it's going to be clockwise because the end result is when you flip it over, the pieces will be counterclockwise. So just remember when you're gluing that the numbers need to be clockwise on the upper ring, which is the one with these cylinders on it. counterclockwise with the lower ring. Okay. Um, the Lazy Susan sits in this. I've got a Granite Earth Lazy Susan. This is the file and I don't think it's named Cut Granite Earth Lower Ring. It might be. It might just be um, listed by dimensions. I want to say it's just listed by the by the diameter of the Lazy Susan. Um, the main thing to remember is you want your Lazy Susan to fit in here and not bind up on this inside lip because it, it needs to be able to spin. This is on your dome. This is covering the Lazy Susan so you don't see the Lazy Susan. So it needs to be able to not be tight up against it or it'll bind. And it either your dome won't spin or it won't spin evenly because it'll, it'll every now and then, unless it's perfectly circular, it might rub up against the lip of this if your Lazy Susan's really close. So there's one for wider Lazy Susan's where this lip is much thinner. So make sure that you print the right one for your Lazy Susan. And make sure that when the numbers are facing up on the flat surface, that they go counterclockwise for the lower ring and they go clockwise for the upper ring. And then this is the order that they sit. The dome sits on top of here and has holes that match up with these. This ring has holes that also match up with these. So when I put them together, you can put a bolt through the dome, through this hole, through this hole. And so you've got your, your two rings attached to your dome. So hopefully that'll help. Um, over here, this is the top ring from the Mark III body file. It does not have numbers or letters embossed in the pieces. Um, afterthought, I guess. I don't know why Michael would have left those out. Um, this top ring is labeled A through E, five pieces of it. Um, this one is fairly easy as long as you label your pieces when you take them off the printer, A through E, so you know which piece is which. Because you'll see, sorry, you'll see this uh, larger diameter of the ring here that then narrows. This is the part that faces forward on the droid. And it's a short area that has this narrow inset and piece A and piece B are the ones that have narrow inset and you can see the join right there. There's no way to get that wrong. Only A and B are going to go together 
and make this indentation look like it does here. And that means you know that that's your A and that's your B, so it would follow that the rest of the pieces go around C, D, and E. Um, I've also got my dome ring gear ring out here and my lazy Susan. I'm not 100% certain on how this all goes together because I'm not to this point yet. Same thing with this. I do not know if this sits on the droid. In this orientation, with these recessed holes facing up towards the dome or down towards the body, because I'm not there yet, but I wanted to start gluing stuff together, so I started gluing the rings. Um, this is not glued together yet either, but I wanted to see how it fits on the Lazy Susan, and you can see that that fits right over that hole. That hole, that hole, so there's six holes that that fits right over, which is good, which is what you want. And these holes here, there's four holes around the Lazy Susan. Those line up with these oval slots, which if you look, they are made so that you put an M4 nut in there, square nut, and it gives you some adjustability to make sure that different Lazy Susans with different holes hopefully will line up and you'll be able to bolt that in place. Saying that, see how thin the plastic is here? I would think if there's an M4 nut that's going to be clamping anything together, this end is probably facing up because it's got more plastic, so it's going to give, if, if you really crank down on a, a nut and bolt here, you might crack this plastic because it's so thin. So I'm betting that this side probably goes up with the recessed, all the, these recessed circles facing down. That would be my guess, but again, I'm not to that point yet. But just looking at it right now, I'm like, well, that makes sense. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want a nut and bolt tightening on such a thin piece of plastic. It'd probably crack. So, um, Anyway, yeah, the dome will sit on top of this. I believe that you want the bolts that go through these holes to be really long. And I think they might go through... The Lazy Susan and the lower ring and the upper ring and into the dome. Don't quote me on that because I'm not positive. Um, let me see. There's uh, one, two, three, four. Looks like there's 14 of these holes. So if you use six for the to hold the Lazy Susan all the way up through those into the dome, that leaves you still some of these that you can use to attach this to the dome, which might make sense. But again, don't quote me on that. That's really, um, I should shut my mouth because I don't know enough about <laughs> this piece of it yet. To know for certain what I do know is the rings that I got lucky I screwed this one up but it still works fine and this is the way they go together do yourself a favor write the numbers on top look at that instruction set for Michael Badley these go clockwise when in this direction pieces there go counterclockwise when in that direction after you've made them they sit like that with the dome on top. So hopefully that helps somebody out with the rings. Also look up Michael Badley's videos. He does have a video uh, taken in his, I think it's his work shed, where he's got um, an R2 unit and he's taken it apart and he kind of shows how everything goes together. It's, it's really helpful. So if you haven't seen that, uh, look for that on YouTube. You'll probably find it by just searching Michael Badley R2-D2 on YouTube, you'll probably find the, 
where that video is.